Okay, so we've talked a little bit about power series, so now we're going to talk about how we can do some combinations of multiple power series. So we're going to start with some generics, so let's let, um, I have two power series here, so c sub n, x to the n, and d sub n, x to the n, so infinite polynomials, and they both converge, right, so the first one, so my c's will converge to some function f of x, and my right, d ones will converge to g of x. Now, right, usually it's the other way. We're given f and we're given g, and we're supposed to come up with a power series. Okay, so we're just showing that right, this is our relationship. So f of x is the what that c sub n x to the n converges to, and g of x is right how we could rewrite um, this power series. We could use this power series to rewrite g of x. How about that? On some interval i. So they're both converging on the same interval. Now, if they don't both converge to exactly the same interval i, then you have to take the intersection of the two intervals. So it's the smallest interval that they both converge on or over. Okay. Um, so here's how we can combine. So we can do um, a sum or a difference. We can add or subtract the two and it will converge to the sum or difference of the two functions, okay? Or, right, going backwards, right, if we have the sum of a couple of functions, we can, right, come up with multiple um, power series, right, that will, will approximate our functions on that interval i. These next two, right, I kind of have to go slowly. So for any integer m, Right, greater than or equal to zero, and any real number b, so b is a coefficient, m is going to be this power of x, okay. then we can take our, right, our series here, the c of n, x n, so we know that c sub n, x sub n converges to f, we can multiply that by a coefficient times an x to a fixed integer, right, so to a fixed power, and that will converge to that thing we multiplied by, b times x to the m times f of x, what that series of c's converged to. And the interval of convergence stays the same on i. Okay. So this next one gets a little bit trickier. So the same thing, so m is gonna be that um, non-negative integer, b is gonna be a real number. So instead of just multiplying the c sub n x to the n, by that extra little factor. Instead, we're going to, I'm going to scroll, we're going to replace the x here in our series, right, with that b x to the m. So, right, c sub n x to the n, just that much converged to f of x. So what we're saying is that if we replace the x in our power series with a b times x to the m, that is going to converge to f evaluated at b times x to the m. Now this one's going to change because we've changed, right, the input that we're doing our function at. So it converges for all x such that b times x to the m is within i, right? So we might have to do a little algebra to actually find the new radius of convergence. Okay, so let's just practice finding the, um, the interval of convergence here. So we're going to say that um, a sub n, x to the n from n equals 0 to infinity, has an um, interval of convergence from negative 1 to 1, and uh, b sub n, x to the n, that power series has an interval um, of convergence from negative 2 to 2. Sorry, scroll. Okay. So if I do, so we call this like a linear combination, if I do it, the difference of the two, what is the interval of convergence? for this new power series that we're making, right? Right, it would have, right, you can think of all of your terms. You'd have, right, a sub zero minus b sub zero plus, right, a one minus b one x to the n, right, et cetera, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay. So the interval of convergence is only, right, it's only valid for the smallest interval that either a or b Right, either one of those series is going to converge to, and that would be right negative one to one. So this, the interval of convergence for this combination is negative one to one. Okay. 
So even though B converges bigger, it can't, right? A doesn't converge there, so then it would be going, A would be going crazy and pulling B along with it. Okay, so what situation does my second example here fall into? Okay, so I have my A sub N, and then I have 3 to the N, X to the N. What does that feel like? Okay. Well, it's, right, even though I've written it like this, it falls into that option 3. So if I rewrite this, I have my x to the n, but then I have 3 times x to the n. Right? So I've replaced the x with a 3x. So when it was just x, right, the interval was from negative 1 to 1. So now it's going to be the case when 3x right, is, has that same radius of convergence between, well, the absolute value of 3 times x is less than 1, so negative 1, less than 3x, less than positive 1, or negative 1 third is less than x is less than 1 third. Okay, so that's how we can determine our interval of convergence. Let's go ahead and let's see what we remember from our geometric series and use that with those combinations. I'm going to keep that sheet handy in case I need to refer back. So we're going to find a power series for the following functions and we're going to try to find an inter interval of convergence. I have two examples. Okay, example one. So f of x and my function is 5x over 1 plus x squared. So let's see. Um, so if we think about this has a little bit of property two. Right? And then we're also going to use um, some of the stuff we remember from our geometric series. So geometric series, just really, really quickly. Um, right, the way we use this with our functions was uh, 1 over 1 minus x equals the series x to the n n equals 0 to infinity for all x less than 1. So what we need to do is somehow convert this function that we have to look like 1 over 1 minus x. So that's that relationship of our geometric series that I talked about in a different video. All right, so this 5x on top, I'm not loving that, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. So I'm going to have a 5x in front. And then a 1 over 1 plus, oh gosh, 1, what am I white out? 1 plus x squared. Because I know from property 2, I can have this, right, b times x on the outside, and I'll just multiply that in at the end. And now this inside, I need to convert to look like 1 minus x squared. I'm sorry, 1 minus x the, for the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to get my 5x, 1 over 1 minus uh, negative x squared. Well, that wasn't too bad. I think I can just do that, right? So that will be um, 5x, and then I've got um, negative x squared. to the n. I'm going to go ahead and n starts at 0 to infinity. I'm going to go ahead and bring my 5x in and we're going to do some manipulating on that. So just rewriting it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do bring my n in, negative x to the 2n. Okay. Now I'm just kind of working with how we do our um, series, how we usually write those. Sorry, I just started, I paused because I want to do my interval of convergence before I get too far along here. Um, interval of convergence, so back here, right, so let's grab our interval of convergence at this step. So my, right, essentially my u value here, right, if this is going to be true whenever my u is less than 1, u is now being played by x squared, so whenever x squared is less than 1, 
and that's going to be true whenever x is less than 1. So my interval of convergence, negative 1 to 1. Okay. Notice, right, having that 5x on the outside, that was property 2. It doesn't change your interval of convergence. It's only going to change, right, if I've got like a coefficient on the inside with the n. Okay. Um, so the negative sign, right, that makes it an alternating series. So I'll just bring the negative 1 to the n out. And then I have my 5. It's just kind of tagging along times 5. And then I've got x to the, I have x to the 2n times x. So that'll be x to the 2n plus 1 from 0 to infinity. Now there are, of course, all different ways you could write that. But that is 1. So I have my power series and I have my interval of convergence. Okay, last example. Oh, just what you guys love. Partial fraction decomposition. I think I'm going to need extra space as well. So I might kind of come up here as I do some, some work. In fact, let's do our partial fractions up here. So what we want to do when we have questions like this is we're going to rewrite this as a um, as two fractions. So we're going to do a partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to take my function g. So they're both linear, so they get constants for their new numerators that we need to find. And you might have different ways. You might use matrices to find these. I, um, I kind of do a little hand wavy, and I multiply through by the common denominator. That leads us to 1 equals a times x minus 3 plus b times x minus 1. And then we evaluate this at different x values. So x equals 3. We'll wipe out my a's, and it tells me that, um, let's see, 2b is 1. So b is 1 half. And then if I look at when x equals 1, that'll wipe out my b's. And then put a 1 in here for this x. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2 times a is 1. Negative 2a is 1. So a is negative 1 half. Right, they're usually opposite signs, almost always. OK, so here we go. So g of x is equivalent to, so I haven't done the power series yet. I'm just finding an alternate way to write my g. OK, so g of x. I could write instead as a negative 1 half over x minus 1 plus positive 1 half over x minus 3. All right. Now let's, OK, go back up there and look at your geometric series. In fact, I'll bring it back down because it's easier to have it close by. So the geometric series part, 1 over 1 minus x equals the summation from 0 to infinity of x to the n as long as x is less than 1. The absolute value of x is less than 1. OK, so if you look at this first one, right, it looks super darn close. I've got the negative 1 half up there, but OK, I can make that work out. Uh, right, I'll just multiply it in. But my, my 1 and my x are in the wrong order. OK, so here's something. Maybe, maybe somebody told you a long time ago, but maybe you don't remember. Notice, what happens if I multiply top and bottom of this fraction by negative 1? First off, right, it's not changing the value. So top and bottom by the same amount doesn't change the value. So that'll make it a positive 1 half for the top. And for the bottom, it switches the order. So now it is 1 minus x. Cool, huh? OK, so the interval of convergence for this one, for this first term, is going to be negative 1 to 1. And the power series for that first one then, right, so the 1 half just multiplies. And then right, this is exactly what I had. So x to the n, n equals 0 to infinity. OK, so the first, first part's done. I'd say the first half, but I think the second one takes a little bit longer. OK, so now we're going to kind of do the same thing for that 1 half over x plus 3, or do something similar. So this time, when I do the negative 1, right, it'll change the 1 half to be negative. Okay, so now I have minus 1 half over um, 3 minus x. But I need this 3 to be a 1. 
right? So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to factor a 3 out. So ignore all this right here. I'm just kind of building my answer down here across the bottom, so I'm going to work across here. So I'm going to go ahead and factor a 3 out of the denominator, so that'll leave me a 1 minus x over 3. Okay. So this 3 that I factored out can like migrate up to live with a 2. It, it doesn't go on top, it goes here with a 2 because right, it's like 1, negative 1 half divided by 3. So now I have negative 1 sixth over 1 minus x over 3. Okay, so let's talk about the interval of convergence. Okay, so now, right, my u value is x over 3, right? If I just do a comparison here, this, right, it's 1 minus this x over 3. I need that x over 3 to be less than 1, which means I need my x values to be less than 3. So the interval of convergence for that second part is negative 3 to 3. But remember the interval for my first part, oh gosh, I wrote an infinity there. You guys didn't catch me. Negative 1 to 1. The first interval is negative 1 to 1. That's smaller, right? That's the smaller one, so that will be, right? We, it only converges from negative 1 to 1 because I'm talking about the entire right function, not just the first fraction of it. Okay, well, um, so down here at the bottom, getting ready to write my, my final-ish answer. So here right, was the summation from the negative 1 half over x minus 1, so now we'll write it for the second one. So here's my new and improved version of that fraction so that it looks like my geometric series. So that will be minus 1 sixth, and then x over 3 to the n. I think I'm going to stop there. And then i is negative 1 to 1.